All right, guys, good old boy 32 here, check it out. We're sitting on the review table. And uh, I tell you what, I've had a lot of fun with the political stuff, but I really am looking forward to getting back to doing range stuff. And uh, with that, we're going to be doing some tabletops that are going to, at, 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 at some point in time, venture out to the range and shoot. And I, I tell you what, uh, <laughs> firearm reviews these days have gotten really tough. Uh, we do have a couple of competitions that are lined up in the near future that are going to be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you this little deal right here. This was sent out to the channel by the guys over there at uh, Ivan Tactical, IvanTactical.com. And it's been a long time. I've actually had this guy for a quite a, quite a bit. Uh, probably seen a couple of pictures of it on Instagram. This is the Clash 2 Gen 2 IR Illuminator and White Light. And what makes this thing really, really damn cool is that you can opt to purchase this guy right here, which right now on Ivan Tactical is kind of out of stock, but for $70. And uh, what I got to do here is I'm going to do a little really quick demonstration, and then we're going to go out to the range, which was videotaped, oh, I don't know, before uh, Thanksgiving last year. We were uh, using the uh, SOP Mod version of the PBS-14s, with this guy. On that cool? It says KB right there. All right, so what are we looking at? This is the Zenitco Gen uh, Crash 2, Gen 2. And uh, since then, I think they've actually moved on to a Gen 3. Uh, I kind of like this model. The Gen 3 is a little bit more slim lined, but this thing is CNC milled aluminum. It's built like a tank, it's Russian. And what it is, is I'm going to remove this protective cap, which you can keep on there, and it's secured, and then you can back it up and then attach it with that little deal right there. But I don't want to drag it on too long. I want to get it out in the field. But what you can do is you switch with these two hard switches between infrared and uh, white light. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that you got this little cover right here, and you can attach this guy or another type to of the uh, of activator tape switch and it snaps on and what happens is also this is the rail extender with you got an AK47 you can actually sit this underneath it then what you do is you can raise the light up using this tape switch on and up back and forth and it works the same with the infrared light now on well let's see on off And we can go into a strobe mode, actually. I don't know how we do that, but it's on there. And you can actually uh, elevate the lighting with using this switch. But I like the tape switch. The neat thing about the tape switch is that you have these little nubs right here. So you know what your right switch is for your laser, and then you know which one it is for the light. The advantage is, is that if you're using a set of nods and you're entering into a room, you can opt to just go really low on the infrared. And that way, you're not actually blinding yourself. So anyway, uh, really cool little deal. I don't even know what type of battery it uses. I haven't had to replace it as of yet. It's pretty hefty. Let's go ahead and check out what the weight is on it. She's 7.1 ounces, and this whole thing together, and I did incorporate this as 10.8 ounces. Whoops, we almost forgot. Well, anyway, this thing retails, I think the new one, the Gen 3, is like $525. It's well worth it if you are into the nods. But uh, let me show you the demonstration of this thing, and you let me know what you think. Anyway, uh, for this guy, $525 in the Gen 3 version, and this tape switch is uh, $70. And this thing is milled. It is a beast. And I tell you what, when we go ahead, I'm going to reinvest in a new set of nods. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and mount this on my uh, the Wildebeest. So it'll be a lot of fun. Check this video out. Here we go. Let's get out to the range a couple months ago. I thought you guys might like this. Here we go. All right, guys. We're sitting out here at the Mifflin County Sportsman's Association. I'm going to show you guys what we got here. I have the Kalesh 2 with the uh, Purse 4. And in front of that is the OpMod PBS 14s backed up with my uh, camera. So we're going to lately get dark out here. And then I'm going to show you guys what the uh, capabilities are of the Clash 2 MIR Illuminator. Now, a cool part about this thing, as we mentioned before, is that you can utilize the rheostat or the adjustments up here to brighten and dim the both 
infrared and the white light. Now, also, you can do the same with a laser. As we talked about, it's nice to know that when you enter a room, you're not also with the white light, you can be over lit, but also with infrared uh, or IR illuminator. Uh, so anyway, we're going to let it get dark and then we're going to check out the limitations of this thing and see how bright it gets up here. Should be fun. Here we go. All right, guys, so here we are. We're sitting out here. This is basically my backyard when I'm at work. The fence that is out there, that is at 30 yards. That trailer, the white trailer that you see, is at roughly about, uh, let's say, 50 yards. And then there is a tower that is out there that, oh, well, look at there. I actually have the light on right now. So uh, there's a tower out there that will identify with the uh, infrared laser. Uh, that's at a little over 800. Okay, so what I want to do right now, we're set up with both the Clash 2 uh, infrared illuminator and the uh, Purse 4 infrared and green laser. So the first thing I want to do, let's just recap the uh, Purse 4. The cool thing about these things, as we pointed out in the uh, tabletop, is that with the rheostats, you can turn these things up and down. And it's, it's really effective if you're doing uh, room clearing or entering an area. You don't want to be blind. It's just like white light. You don't want your infrared illuminator to basically light up so much that it uh, destroys your night vision or over, over brightens the area, whatever. Okay, so let's do this. Real quickly, I'm going to uh, illuminate the infrared laser on the Purse 4. And you can see that right there. We'll go ahead and uh, eliminate that tree with it. And then we can take it and light up that telephone pole. And then we can bring it out the building. And then the wood line over there and the tower right there at the base of the tower, that is 850 yards. That's pretty impressive. That IR illuminator is bad to the bone. So uh, that's not why we're here. But let me show you real quickly what we're talking about is I can bring it up and down. What I'm gonna do is find the, uh, the dials here. So that's all the way down. We'll go ahead and put it on the van over there and then we can bring it up six levels of brightness all the way to its brightest. And like you said, there's you can see that it's hitting that tower at 800 yards without any issues. And we can actually illuminate almost the damn whole room with this thing, we don't even need that. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now what I want to do is that is the IR illuminator right there. And we've got that. There it is. We're turning it all the way up. You can see, man, this thing really lights up the whole area. But as you can see, also, we can bring it down to where we've got it pointed out about 10 yards in front of us. But look at that. That is amazing. And coupled with the infrared laser that we can turn all the way up. You can see that thing, that's a pretty powerful tool right there. And uh, like I said, the only thing that I have any complaints about it is that it is very, very bulky. Uh, but, I mean, you get what you pay for <laughs> in the long run. Um, but this is a really, really neat setup. So there you go. I'm glad that this finally worked out. I had to figure out how to connect the camera behind the uh uh, the PVS 14s in order to get it to work out properly. As you can see, man, look at that thing hit that tower up there. But that's uh, about a thousand yards out there. We can go ahead and poke it out. That's a thousand yards there, and then back over here, and then we can put it in front of us. There's the flashlight. That's without the flashlight, the illuminator. We can go ahead and, like I said, bring that up. And that's a good, I think, a good demonstration of how this thing would work. But if you're doing room clearing, I would definitely go ahead and just bring that flashlight down, bring that laser down. You don't need all that light. Or you can just turn it off. There you go. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, this is a really cool setup and something that I think that is not only useful, but in the long run, you, I think everybody should at least delve into the night vision game with some infrared. Uh, a lot of guys, they say, if you're not going to run laser uh, with infrared, and it's really not worth it. But I tell you what, I've watched my kid play the uh, new uh, Call of Duty 
uh, that thing's pretty good. Cold War. And uh, seems they used the red lasers a lot back then. <laughs> anyway, I just want to do a real quick shout out, not only to uh, the guys over there at Ivan Tactical, Zenico, uh, for the Clash 2. This thing is incredible. Uh, being able to adjust that light up and down inside of a room or outside, get that light you need to project or illuminate an area, uh, is pretty incredible. Uh, the Zenit Co. Perf 4, this thing has been just the biggest and most fun thing to operate with, the topics of conversation out at the range. Uh, we were able to shoot those ranges and get the uh, distances with this guy right here. This is the SIG. This is their Kilo 3000, the BDX. Got this from the guys from uh, Big Daddy Unlimited. They sent this out to the channel so I could use not only in the Snipers Unknown, but I could use it moving forward and with some other things we got coming up. The DMR match uh, at the Sawmill. That's it. And uh, But anyway, if you go on my YouTube, or not my YouTube, what do you call that thing? My website, kb32tech.com. There's a link. Um, I've got a couple different build projects, one being the 6.5 Creedmoor that we're just doing. And then secondly, I've got the Pandemic Build Series as well as uh, Steal the Vote Series. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. So big shout out to those guys. Also, uh, without the guys over there at Optics Planet, this thing right here, the uh this is their this is armor site this is the op mod pvs 14. um also want to give a quick shout out to the guys over there at www.deathxsquad.com kill all targets bury the competition uh they sent this a uh, really cool miniature bipod out or tripod and this thing is really cool simply because uh i can use this to actually um do videos with. I'm really digging it. And you can use this to uh, zero, help zero your rifles or if you just want to do displays. Actually, I think it's a great tool to use to work on your rifles. It has a, a pick rail attachment right here as well as an integrated uh, ARCA rail. So you guys who are shooting uh, precision rifles, this is a pretty cool little deal right here. So in any case, um, is it not spinning all the way around? There we go. We are done. The purse four and the clash two. That's badass. Guys, if you like this video, you want to see more of it like these things, uh, I'm going to have to invest in one of these things and they're not cheap. I think uh, the one I want is like 2,500 bucks. Mama's going to kill me, but we're going to put it on a card, whatever. And then a couple suppressors would be nice for Christmas. It's Boy 32 If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. Uh, sometimes they're Russian. But at least, uh, and I don't know where these are made. These are made by Armaspec, but uh, Armsite.com. But these are old. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom, because freedom is not free. I thought that the AKV would be a perfect platform to play with this thing. So anyway, with that being said, y'all be good. I'm out of here.